Throughout history, religion and science have not always seen eye to eye. In the pre-Renaissance days, religious thought would almost always trump scientific discovery. With the advancements in technology and theory, science has been pushing boundaries that religious thinkers are trying to either dispute or explain in theological terms. Religion and science, however, do share a fascination with the celestial world. Scientists spend a great deal of time and resources to discover what is going on within our galaxy and the limitless galaxies throughout the universe. Religious thinkers try to find a correlation between their beliefs and the astrological phenomena that occurs in deep space. There are countless th stories that deal with creation and other aspects of the heavens. The line drawn between scientific reasoning and religious teachings is inching closer and closer together. The correlations between the theories of scientists and that of the religious teachings that are held as fact by many can be compared and contrasted. There are stories about how and when the universe was formed. Creation stories in different religions vary wildly from the emergence of a mountain from a primeval sea in ancient Sumer to a god creating the universe in seven days from nothing in Christianity and Judaism. The most popular theory in science tells us that the creation of the universe happened sort of by happenstance. It is called the Big Bang Theory. Author Karen C. Fox explains what the Big Bang Theory is about by saying, In the beginning there was nothing. Well, not quite nothing, more of a nothing with potential. A nothingness in which packets of energy fleeted in and out of existence, popping into oblivion as quickly as they appeared. One of these fluctuations had just enough energy to take off. It inflated wildly out of control, one moment infinitesimally small, moments later light years across. All of space and time was created in that instant. And as energy sl slowed, it cooled and turned into matter, proton and neutrons and photons. This baby universe kept expanding over billions of years, and those particles coalesced into the stars and planets, and eventually into humans. The Big Bang Theory leads to one of the most destructive forces in the universe, the black hole. A black hole is defined as a region in the universe where the gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape from it. The correlation to the strength of a black hole and the force or forces used by deities or other life forces has been a hot button topic. Is a black hole a scientific discovery or is it a creation of a superior force making their mark on the universe? Do scientists have the upper hand in the argument or are there religious stories that can place the creation of these monster forces and show that they are a part of a master plan? I will be going through select religious beliefs to try and find an answer to these questions. The similarities might surprise you. The logical place to start this journey of discovery is to clearly define what exactly a black hole is and how they are formed. Author Gina Miseroglu answers simply, a black hole is an invisible region of space that is thought to have such intense gravity that not even light can escape. Scientists believe that a black hole is created when a giant star collapses in upon itself when it dies. A star lives as long as it can burn fuel. The burning of fuel acts as a counterforce against gravity. Without that counterforce, a star's gravity would cause it to collapse in on itself. If the star is large enough and has a strong enough force of gravity, it will become a black hole when it collapses. The creation of a black hole is through the demise of a star. The area around a black hole that is considered safe is said to be outside of its event horizon. This is the boundary that should not be crossed to remain out of the grasp of the gravitational pull of a black hole. The proverbial crossing of the line between good and evil is a common story in Western philosophy. This also directly relates to most religious philosophies in that after a life cycle has ended, at some point in time a new one begins. We will start the discussion with a view of the ancient Greeks and follow to modern day religious thought. The ancient Greeks believed that in the beginning there was a nothingness. That nothingness was called chaos. Chaos was said to be a void or a collection of elemental materials. Out of chaos, the earth and sky were formed. The nothingness, or void space, is a theme that relates to many of the world religions. The nothingness that burst forth into the universe creating all that is known links the Greek belief to scientific theory. It could also easily be assumed that a black hole is just a creation of the ancient gods. 
The idea that out of nothingness the world and the universe were created is a repeated pattern through many of the religious theories. Hinduism has a myth that relates the cycle of time to a black hole. Hindus believe that Pralaya, or the end of the universe, occurs when God inhales and the creation starts over again when there is an exhale. The inhale suggests that there is a large-scale removal of all material that is around. This is exactly what happens to everything that gets within the event horizon of a black hole. Everything is sucked in. What happens on the other side of the black hole is left to the imagination. But is it possible that a new fresh universe is started on the inside? If nothing can escape from a black hole, it can only be theorized what happens inside of one. The general scientific consensus is that nothing can remain intact after being absorbed by a black hole, because the gravitational pull is so strong that everything that enters it is deatomized. This could also be the space before rebirth. A being is disassembled and then put back into another shape and reborn. This thought plays into the Hindu belief that if there is someone who has good karma when they die, they might get a rest before being reborn. The mention of darkness during creation occurs in stories from India. Out of the darkness, or tamas, which is a physical and mental darkness, the world was formed by a powerful creative force. Before the creation, the universe was said to be in a sleep-like manner. The Hindu faith also has a reference to black holes when the age of the universe is calculated. The Hindus relate the age of the earth to the age of the Brahma. The Hindus claim that the absolute age of the sun and the earth is 155.521972 trillion years. The age that scientists give us is approximately 4.5 to 4.8 billion years. The discrepancy is explained by the Hindus as the scientists not taking into account the age of the black hole. Black holes have been cleaning up the universe and that is why there is a time variance between the estimated ages. Another aspect that shows a correlation between science and religion is found in Buddhism. A staple of the Buddhist belief is that there are no external forces at work. Reality is the only force that we need to concern ourselves with. The human concern is relevant only to nothingness. And out of that nothingness all things arise and slowly return to nothing. Oshu, the author of the book Zen, The Art of Enlightenment says, Physicists call that nothing the black hole. Matter disappears into black holes, is utterly annihilated, and becomes nothing. Now, after black holes, there is talk of white holes too. Out of white holes, matter arises. It seems white holes and black holes are just two aspects of the same reality, like a door. One way is an entrance, and the other an exit. The state of nothingness, or zeroness, as it is referred to, is the ultimate destination. The concept of a black hole is a goal for Buddhists. The beliefs of the Buddhist people are interwoven with the scientific explanation of black holes. Buddha was somewhat puzzling to the general public at first with this concept of nothingness, and yet many chose to give up their possessions and allow him to lead them to enlightenment. Likewise, today, Many people find it hard to understand when physicists talk about black holes and the magnitude of their power, and yet they too choose to believe it. By weaving the topics of black holes and nothingness together, there is an understanding to the thought processes of the Buddha and how Buddhist philosophy can be used today with modern science. The Old Testament begins with the book of Genesis. The book is used by both the Jewish faith and the Christian faith so a comparison to both will be made. Genesis discusses the creation story and contains interesting language that can be related to the area in and around black holes. It says that in the beginning the earth was nothing and there was darkness all around. It tells of how God created the world in seven days. There is a debate on the Hebrew word for create. Some scholars maintain that the actual translation should be to shape or to form. Both the scientific world and the Old Testament agree that at one time there was a void and that some force, the Big Bang for scientists and the Spirit of God moving or blowing across it for religionists. The force that caused this movement will require a great amount of power. A black hole can shift materials because of its great gravitational pull. The force exerted on celestial objects causes a reactive force in other objects. This is how gravity works. The acceleration of an object is what keeps it in its given path. 
The deep that is referred to in the book of Genesis could be the vast reaches of outer space. The seven days that are referred to in the book of Genesis deal with a time constraint that is inconsistent with how spatial time is viewed. The seven days in this time frame could actually be hundreds of thousands of years. The chronological order of the occurrences indicates that there is a definite order to the creation. The vast expansion of the universe shows that time on a large scale can't be thought of in our seconds, minutes, or even days. The author Andrew S. Ballion states, Most of the earliest Christian leaders rejected the view that a 24-hour solar day was meant in Genesis 1. In fact, they most often adopted what is called the God's Day view. God was speaking of day as it appears to himself. God was not speaking of man's day. Thus, using God's definition elsewhere of the length of his day as much larger than man's day, such as in Psalm 94 and 2 Peter 3.8. A thousand years is like a day to the Lord. Similarly, scientists agree that time in space is not as it appears to us on Earth. With the speed that objects travel in space, motion is relevant to the viewer. Therefore, any doings by a celestial power indicates that there would be a time differential. We have established earlier that nothing can escape from a black hole, not even light. The darkness that is referred to in Genesis could draw a parallel to what Christians and Jews refer to as an ever-present evil or Satan. There is no light without God, there is only darkness. Therefore, we could also relate a black hole to the evil in the world trying to suck us into its non-existence. The stabilizing factor is God. Gravity is a stabilizing factor in our everyday life. A black hole keeps the celestial bodies aligned with its great gravitational pull. The relationship of a black hole and God is that it keeps all things in line. Satan can also be compared to dark matter. Dark matter makes up most of the universe and is everywhere. In Islamic faiths, much like Judaism and Christianity, there is a great sense of the difference between what is light and what is dark. Islam traces its ancestry back to Abraham and it shares many of the prophets with Judaism. The holy book of Islam is the Quran. According to Fatah Ullah Khan, the Quran speaks of black holes. He says, according to the Holy Quran, these black holes have a great purpose to perform and a vital role to play in collapsing the universe. The black holes are invisible celestial cannibals in the universe to devour stars and planets that come into the zone of their pathways that is the path of light rays to ultimately cause the gravitational collapse of the universe. The reading goes on to say that the Quran predicted black holes over 1400 years ago. Given the age of the universe and the discovery of black holes by science within the last 80 years, the possibility exists that there is a force that is making the world go around. Through the information and sources that have been gathered, it is easy to see the correlation of religious thought and scientific sensibilities. Through the celestial body of a black hole, there is now a link between the mathematical existence of black holes and the possibility that there is another force at work. From the creation stories of the Greeks and Abrahamic religions down to the destructive possibilities that is seen in the Quran of the Islamic faith and continuing on into the destruction and then eventual rebirth found in the Hindu beliefs, there is enough evidence to reasonably say that religion and science meet somewhere. The unknown that is a black hole is a mystery to all who dare to wonder about it. There is a leap of faith taken on during every scientific experiment. The results are the cause of much anticipation and anxiety. With technology advancing as fast as it is now, and with the desire and will of brilliant minds working toward a better understanding of the final frontier, who knows what discoveries will be made in the upcoming decades and centuries. The lasting truths are the ones that can be proven. Everything else is just theory. As any scientist knows, Theories are only good until new data comes along to change the thought process. With the information presented here, the correlation between science and religion is not as far apart as once thought. The combination of ideas seem to make perfect sense. Through the creation stories of the various religions, we see a pattern of darkness turning into light. Science says that there was nothing, and then, boom, there was something. Gradually, the universe worked its way to this point. To the scientific eye, this makes sense. To the religious point of view, it is a supernatural force, whether from a deity or from within our own conscience. It has slowly shaped the universe to where it is today. The same beginnings and the same end result occur in both cases.